Alright, let's go in the back of the car. Not as much as you. Alright. Yeah. Uh, want me to get the legs right. Okay. Cowards! Cowards! I just want my kids back. They're all here. Cowards! Cowards! Especially Ortiz. Yep. Feet first. Yep. My grandkids, I miss my family. Why can't I have a family? What are these monsters gonna let me? What do I need? I need the FBI to stop ruining my fucking life. Then leave our building. Is that a joke? You making jokes? You, leave, sir. you making jokes? You can leave. Fuck you. Time. You're making jokes? Okay. Awesome police department. Great! Okay. They can fight your battles too, you fucking pansy ass fucking coward! Okay. Cowards! Cowards! Hey, Cowards! Okay, you listen to me. Or I'm gonna put you in handcuffs right now. Okay. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Do, do what you gotta do. Eight of you. Okay. Eight of you. Okay. Eight cowards. You can't walk down a little bit before you call the ambulance. Okay, you know what? Please come on, let's go. What's the code? Huh? What's the code? What? To get her to stop feeling sick? You don't know? Yeah, don't believe me. What's the code? Huh? What's the code? What? To get her to stop feeling sick? You don't know? Huh? What's the code? What? To get her to stop feeling sick? Yeah, don't believe me. The guys before you fattened her up. The ones that made her lose custody of Stone that she was living with. For, for weeks and weeks, they kept cooking stews and steaks. She kept joking. She's like, it's like they're fattening me up. Okay. Eight of you. Okay. Eight cowards and a guy in a dress. Cowards! It's like they're fattening me up. And then one day, they just became tweakers. After fattening her up and making her body image really fucked up, they just became tweakers in the house. So what did she do? She did tweak, and then she lost her son. So what did she do? She did tweak, and then she lost her son. Cowards! Alright, step right over here by the wall. Okay. Uh, which one? Pick a wall. You're very you're bad at this, man. Yeah, face the wall. Please. Oh, face the wall. You got any weapons on you? I don't. Alright. Just my voice. Sure you don't have any weapons on you? I'm me? positive, bro. I brought four tomatoes, but... So you want to come to me as a man, I'm going to tell you what I've seen year after year. And if I saw you as separate from that pattern, that would be great. The only person I saw separate from that pattern was a guy who, who she's known for years. And what happened? A cop moves into the house with them, gets them all tweaked out, breaks up their relationship. The one guy who didn't fuck with her. But he's got a phone in his front pocket. They right. sure do. Where's your front pocket? Other side, sure. You got an ID on you? Not on me. It's in my bag. What's your name? Someone moves into the house and fucks up the whole thing. Now you come into her life. Now you come into her life literally the day after your best friend steals everything I own. Okay? At the same time. Now hold on, hold on. Yeah. As soon as I found out, because you got the hat back, okay? Yeah. As soon as What happened when I got the hat back? Look, listen. I don't think they'll notice him here. Or... Why couldn't he go get you water if you were fucking dying of thirst? Oh, no, no. I'm good with that. I don't. You know, many years ago, I took a bridge hostage. I uh, occupied a bridge in San Diego for six hours and caused the largest traffic jam in San Diego history. And just call the ambulance, please. Well, I called lawyers. I called about a dozen senators and congressmen and the videos are all on the YouTube page. No one will help me. 
I have sought a redress of my grievances a long time now with a lot of people and no one will help me. So, you know, I'm here at the uh, federal building in San Diego. The federal building, the federal government itself. So, uh, there's the visitor entrance. What is, what exactly is wrong? My stomach, I have to puke a lot right now. Here's this one too, before you should call me. Have a better day, okay? Yeah, you too. Happy Easter. <coughs> this is the federal building. How you doing, gentlemen? Um, I'm actually here uh, for a redress of my grievances. I want a redress of my grievances, and uh, why don't you guys stop bugging me? Stop! Please stop bugging me! Stop bugging me! Thank you! You guys stop bugging me! Please! Now you have a thousand ladybugs in your lobby. What happens now? I don't know. You don't know? Am I not breaking a law? I gotta leave? That's it? All ladybugs? Just gonna let me go? Well, I was hoping to get arrested, but. Alright. I seek a redress of my grievances. I want you to stop bugging me. Well, not you personally. Sir, what are you here for? I'm here to seek a redress of my grievances. Okay. Why did you dump all those bugs all over Bobby? Because I'm a big fan of metaphor. Is this still on? Yeah. Oh, look at what you did. I know. Think we should shut down the building? Is that. Well, now you got bugs in your building. Why have you been, why has the federal government been torturing me for the last 10 years? Oh, it is very funny. That's what happened. Political protest, son. Okay. What happens next? They will, sweet. And the pain and Please! Make the noise stop. We're gonna start the IV for. You drink, smoke? Alright, uh, smoke. smoke cigarettes. When was your last cigarette? This morning. Okay, is this still on? I don't even gonna arrest me. Just put a hundred bugs in the lobby. Hey, come on out here. Oh, okay. Can I get my water or no? No. Okay. That's okay. This is... What's your name, sir? Here. Can I let go of this? Yeah. I'm going to set these bags right. down. I have no weapons. All right. There's like a, a, a small There's dull a, knife. Set everything you down. have bugs, sir. I do have bugs all over. Because I was protesting the... Uh... Oh, there's one here. quite to wear it hurts. Have you had pain like this before? Yes. Hi, Nicole. This is Seth Aronson, Aronson Victoria Schwindel's dad. Um, yeah, I'm calling to see if you guys, if you know if you're admitting her or if you're releasing her. Because this has been going on for a week and the hospitals just keep letting her go. And then she spends all night screaming like a lunatic and throwing up all over everything. It's like a crime scene. Please, Lord, Lord, help me. She threw up and yelled and screamed all night. Again. Hi, Dr. Weezer. My name's Seth Aronson. I am Victoria Swindell's uh, godfather, father. Um, I want to know what's going on because they've, we've been having, this has been going on all week. She's been released from the hospital three times she comes home she spends all night screaming and yelling like a lunatic and throwing up all over everything so I'm hoping you're admitting her see, see here's the thing and I'm, I'm gonna I explain it to the morning nurse but I'm gonna tell you exactly what's going on so when she wakes up from where she, she you have her sedated now of course 
when she wakes up from that, she's going to be fine. And she's going to be asking for a cigarette and saying she wants to get out of there. Oh, I just got my gun. Are they bringing her food or should we, can we go get food? Oh, they're going to bring her. Okay. I don't believe that, so I'm going to go get me cafeteria food. Because I've been waiting for a good minute. Can she go get some? Or yeah. I mean, really. Just, no, that, you that can, that uh, you making can, it hungry. You can go, but the patient can't really okay. go out of the unit. In case your patients can't go walking into no. that. So I'll call you and tell you what they have there. That's some ridiculous shit, man. No. I'm still in the hospital. Like, I know, but you can roam the whole, the whole hospital. Well, then let me have a security guard come with me. I don't get it. I'm honestly, uh, I've been having the worst service here ever. When she wakes up from that, she's going to be fine. And she's going to be asking for a cigarette and saying she wants to get out of there. Because she doesn't have a medical problem, she, there's a gang of five guys who have been hypnotizing her. And with a post-hypnotic suggestion, they have get her to think there's something in her stomach she has to throw up. And I've been documenting for this for four different hospitals over the last three years. So here are the guys who did this to her. The guys that did this to her. The gang of motherfuckers who did this to her. It was Josh, John, Johnny who raped her. Carlos. And uh, what was the last one's name? Oh, Joe. And now it's Jace. Jace the, is the last of the ones that have done this to her. So if you, if she seems fine, say mamas. Mamas is the personality they switch her into so they can, so she gets sick. Now I've been dealing with this. She's, this hasn't happened in a year. A year ago this happened over and over again and it stopped. And all of a sudden the boyfriend who's part of this gang called her mamas again two days ago. She gets off the phone with him and she started throwing up and she basically hasn't stopped until she comes out of it. They, you, you, same thing happened at the other hospital down the street. We went in, they, she was screaming like a lunatic, throwing up all over everything. They sedated her. She woke up. She was fine. She wanted to leave. So I'm telling you there's a psychological thing going on here and I can show you the pictures of the throwing up and the screaming and yelling all night long, but this, something needs, you can't just release her. Something needs to be investigated here because, well, do you have a psychologist on staff? Well, they just need to, to get her out of that personality. There's... There's, she, has, she has multiple person. She may say bi uh, bipolar, but that's just what her mother's shorthand for was. My uncle's bipolar. Victoria is not bipolar. She has multiple personality disorders. She has six personalities. And these guys manipulated... Mamas is the name of our dead cat. And they manipulated her to think she has a new personality called Mamas. And when they call her Mamas and she switches into that, she yells and screams and throws up for hours on end. Yeah. No, no problem. So the issue, I mean, you know, we did a CT scan of her belly and, and it looks okay, but the issue you think is that she's just under the influence of these well, people? And, and you know what, I, I, she's calling me right now. Um, can, can I answer her? Can, I don't want to put you on hold, but she's probably freaking out. Is she awake now, apparently? Uh, yes, yeah, she is. I can see her. She's up in bed. Yeah, she's... Let me, let me, you can talk no, to her she, you, you, I, I'll call her back, I'll call her back, um, so, so, I don't know what to do, because if you tell her I said that, she's going to flip out and start yelling and screaming about me, but I, I, I mean, it's going to, we'll see you, she'll see you again tomorrow, is what I'm saying, because this has happened over and over again, I don't, you haven't got to LA out. You know, I've been waiting for three days. You keep saying you're on your way to come say goodbye to me for three days, dude. I've Are been you? waiting by the train station for I'm like three days. Didn't go on. My screen TV thing is working. Is there a reason you just kind of left me stranded for three days?
What are you on, dude? I don't know. I don't know what the Makes me like I'm crying. Yeah. Oh, God. You're you're okay. No, I just want to make sure you're okay. Well, did they? I'm not even here. I haven't been here. What does this mean? Why was somebody doing that? Yeah, he was doing that to you. Because he. No, he was doing that to you. I don't know. He was giving you a signal. I don't know. You know, my uncle Brian, the magician. So the person I've ever met who talks about hypnosis as much as these guys do. That knows what? Talks about hypnosis as intimately as these guys do. They are very skilled in hypnosis. And they talk about it like that, like he does, because he's skilled in hypnosis. Hmm. Should be careful. I don't know what the fuck's going on, but what them you being that sick and then walking into a room and all of a sudden you were better and they're like, you better like they had done that. If they had given you a post hypnotic suggestion to be sick and then to at a certain signal unbe sick, that is exactly why you would you were like, Boom, I'm better. I spoke spice. True. That's when they walked in the room. So we'll never know which what I it was. I felt better before they walked in the room. Remember I said that they yeah. they came in? Yeah, okay. We don't know yet for sure. I know. But, but I like the, I'm taking your suggestion. Please, I just need to be honest with you because I love you and I'm scared with you being here because they laughed way too much about you being sick. No one laughs that much about someone being that sick. So be careful. And I love you. Love you too. There was a show put on for John when he got home that night. They talked about it. I heard Josh and John talk about it. I have videotape of the old guy next door saying he wishes he was at the hot show. If you don't remember it, sweetie, then something's going on, and I'm, that's why I'm scared. <laughs> they, would you like to watch the video of the old guy saying no. he wished he saw the show? Mm. And you don't remember anything happening when John getting home other than him asking for sex, and you say no. <laughs> right, you and I have known each other a long time. All parts of your personality know you can trust me. Hypnosis is about getting parts of your personality to shut off and getting one to do what, what the, hip, the hypnosis person says. So, you all know that you can trust me. And whatever they're doing to you, sweetie, I'm sorry. A year ago, almost to the day, she was sitting across from me, eating a meal at a restaurant. Jace called on the phone. He said something to her. All of a sudden, her eyes go back in her head and she becomes this. It's right here. It's right here. This table's right here. I'm not. It's not sweating anymore, but I still feel my stomach. When did you last hop? I have to like two days ago. That was two days ago? Ricky? Oh, I, like I know you don't. <laughs> this is now the fourth guy in a row that's done this to you. Oh my god, it's not Jace. He it's... called you and then you No, suddenly... it isn't. I was eating and I went to go take a shit. And when I go take a shit, sometimes that happens to me. What happens? Your eyes roll back in your head and you're no, sick? I start to sweat. When I, there's something that starts to go on in my stomach when I'm taking a shit. This is from pooping? Something that went wrong in my bowels. What do you mean? It's got to be cat, that stuff that they're talking about. What? Because it's in my bowels. I'll start shit with Jace because he'll start it. I'll just straight fight you. Okay? You remember the first time they did this? Oh my god, so get inside the restaurant, leave me alone. Oh, Jace will fight me? Let's see, Jace has attacked me three separate times. This is Josh, the original person who first hypnotized her. 
Small world, huh, man? What's up, boy? How you doing? Good. How you doing? Fine. Right. I want to talk to you about something. Right. Your hypnotist, your hypnotist training. What? You always used to talk about hypnosis. Why? Wait a minute. Are you recalling this? It's a movie and some some you know crazy psychedelic trip that you were on sometime. That there was a little leprechaun in. There's a correlation there, and you're figuring it all no, out. No, you talked own. in depth about. Uh, to you. Yeah. Okay, whatever, man. At talking. your house, you talked in depth about knowing about putting people under hypnosis, how easy it was. You remember that conversation? I went to the police, tried to get them to do something, but these guys are police! They're DEA agents, I'm guessing, because of the amount of drugs that they do, or FBI agents. I don't know who they are, but someone needs to find out, because this is insane, that this is happening to my family. Why? Why is this happening? Because I did this. Ten years ago. And this is the lawsuit that could shut us down. It all started here. January 10th, we have to make sure 2006. The San Diego Board of Supervisors were trying to overturn medical marijuana. And I did this. We had this freedom for nine years, and if you take this away, if you try and take this away from the medical marijuana patients who have been kept alive by this, if you make me have to go back out into the street to get my medicine, you don't want to open up that can of, as the kids say, whoop ass. You don't want to declare war on us. If we have to start having protests in front of your individual houses, if we have to take the protests to you, this will get as ugly as you decide it has to get. It's going to get as ugly as it has to get before you decide to do the right thing. We're not asking you to do the wrong thing. We're asking you to actually do the right thing. And I see the way that uh, it's well known throughout the state that Mr. Bill Horn is the leader of this. He's on point, as they say. And this will not stand. This, you will not take our freedom away. And the smirking, the, the power, that you have to do this to people, to take people who are, have cancer and have gone to the doctors and the doctors give them pills and those pills have side effects and they need other pills to counteract the side effects or they take medical cannabis and they get to eat. I've seen it save lives. It saved my life. And if you want to take my medicine away, if you want to take away 100,000 people in the state of California's medicine away, you better be prepared for this fight because this is not going to be just a slam dunk. You can slip it in through the courts. If you declare war on us, it's your declaration. Thank you. So, of course, Homeland Security checked me out, and I'm sure they looked at this film I made back in 2004, and they saw this. I'm just, there's that the Aerosmith said before they got the $125 million contract, something about eat the rich. Now, I'm a non-violent man, but right now, I feel like taking a flamethrower to my own lippers. The whole fucking thing. See, I put in the disclaimer that I'm nonviolent, but for some reason, I think that scared Homeland Security a little bit. I was an activist, man. I Mr. did. Mr. Mayor, there are so many better candidates. Mr. Mayor, no better candidates. Mr. Mayor, could you give a flower to Mr. Manis for me, please? No. please? Sorry. No. But it's it's for Mr. Manis. It's just a flower. Much better candidates. It's good for you. It heals people. Okay.
I know that the drug companies are a big part of the problem. I mean, they spend, there's an incredible amount of money spent on that. If there was, say, a plant that you could grow in your backyard, <laughs> and, uh, say, everything from glaucoma to, to insomnia to, to help cancer patients, would you support that plant? <laughs> Well, uh, that, that would be great, but she's not going to do it based on me saying this. That's why while she's in there, if you have someone who could put her under hypnosis and ask her what's going on, this will all come out. I mean, this is a gang up. They didn't just hit me. They yeah. drugged her with dust off. I have videotape footage of her being all drugged out on dust off, and they manipulate her personalities. And well, I mean, our psychiatrists don't do hypno hy okay. hypnosis. They're, I mean, they're not, they so you're going to release her? Well, I... I'm, I'm exploring options, but yeah. our, our, I said our, our psychiatrists don't do hypnosis. Yeah. That's just not something they do. Well, I mean, what would you if what would you think's going on then? I mean, if she's throwing up and screaming like a lunatic over and over and over again, I I mean, I don't hold. I don't know what to do. I mean, the the, the ambulance driver looked frightened because she was screaming like a lunatic. I mean, you saw her. Yeah, no, I understand. Um, I'm calling her on my other phone right now. Let me see if she wants to stay or if she wants to go. Because this, because I just don't want her freaking out that she couldn't get a hold of me. But I don't know. Uh -huh. Hey, I got your doctor on the line. Are you? Do you want to stay there and have them look at you more, or are you try want to leave? I can wait. You want to leave? They have a Virginia bus pass, twenty-four hour bus pass. Okay. All right. Well, I'm. Uh, I'll be I'm at this. Yeah, I know. Um, I am too. All right, let me finish talking to your doctor. I'll call you back. Okay. Right. Okay, so... You see, I mean, she... Would, she be, would, she, would she be willing to follow up with some kind of mental health, you know, professional or clinic? That if you didn't call it mental health, if you said this is someone who can help you deal with stress, because, okay, the, the, the thing she agrees on that's causing this is stress. So she doesn't realize that it's the stress of that mama's personality that they created comes up and then starts throwing up. So I need to be able to teach her how to put that mama's personality back away because that's all it does is get sick. It didn't okay. exist before. When she was screaming last night, she kept calling herself mamas. Yeah. And that's the, what the guy said on the phone that made her start throwing up. And what did they drug her with? Yeah, dust off. What is that? It's a, that inhalant, like, uh, that, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> once they do that, they can manipulate her per personalities at will. And I mean, I'm documenting this, but I can't get anyone to take me seriously because it sounds so ridiculous. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, I can certainly give her some follow-up options and say that it's to treat stress, stress that may be causing her. Perfect. Because she's just going to bring that. Me. She's just going to bring that paperwork to me, and then I can move forward with that. So that would be perfect. Okay. Let me let me um, provide her with some info. I don't. Can you? You know, be, okay. be, based on the. CT scan, I don't think that there's anything clearly wrong in her abdomen. So yeah, I, I mean, like what you're, that you're, essentially what you're saying is that it's something psychological. Not, yeah, psychological, uh, which it, I think fits. Yeah, because I mean, this, we keep going through this, and that's the only real answer because there's nothing physically wrong with her. It's literally in her head, but getting her to realize that these guys put it in her head is going to be the tough part because it's, they drugged her so much, I can't even. But yeah, if if you can give her, could you give her a prescription for an antacid? Because that's what she, even as a placebo effect, that's what she believes will help her stomach. So if she had an antacid that was prescribed and she knew it was a good antacid, I mean, I can't just, buy, if, I, I could just buy her Tums, but we're literally homeless and begging. I don't have enough money to get to, to your hospital because I'm begging for yeah, money um, right now. So, so I was going to, because I was worried about how much pain and fun and vomiting she was saying she was having I was going to send her over with a prescription for a small quantity of pain medicine and nausea medicine but I can certainly add an antacid definitely thank you and um, what, which pain medicine because she's had problems with which one were you going to send her because she's had problems with uh, some of them with addiction well just with Herpes. yeah yeah often. well uh, I had written a prescription for Norco which does contain a narcotic but if you think that not I think if you put her on Norcos, she's going to want to come back to the hospital when the Norcos are gone for more Norcos. I don't, she's not 
going to be in pain once. Okay, then I'll just prescribe her an Aussie medicine, which is not addictive, and then the antacid. We'll Perfect. The, that, uh, that, if, if only for placebo effect, that's going to help her deal with it when I get back, and I'm going to try to find a hypnotherapist that can help her fix this, because it's, it's, I mean, I'm, it's breaking my heart. It's sure. all night uh, long, screaming and puking. I can't, it, I've never seen anyone in that much pain in my entire life. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I will give her some prescriptions. Um, okay. And, uh... Don't tell her I said anything about this. Just give her the, the mental health thing. Say it's for stress, and I'll, she bring me the paperwork, and I'll make the appointments and, and okay. work her through that. Uh, and, I will do that. And what was your name again, I'm sorry? Uh, Chris Wiesner. Thank you so much, Doctor. I, I really appreciate your help. Uh, no problem at all. Thank you for the call. Have a good day. Have you had pain like this before? Yes. Did they ever figure out why, what's wrong? They said it was a stomach virus this oh. time. And then when did the pain start this time? This morning. Have you had any other symptoms? I've been throwing up and, and having diarrhea. Okay. Have you been around anyone sick? No. Are you allergic to anything? No, uh -huh. Do you have any medical problems? No, asthma. Why are you so sleepy? No, I just don't feel good. Oh, okay. All right. So we're going to put an IV in you and give you some, a bunch of IV fluids, okay? Some medicine for nausea and something to drink. Okay. Thanks. Doctor. Doctor. Yes, sir. Can she see a psych? Huh? Can she see a counselor or someone maybe who can... For what? I don't know. I just think it's, it's, it's a little more... It's not necessarily a stomach flu. I think it's a little... Stress related? Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, we'll see what we can do. Okay. Oh, what was your nausea start? This morning. This morning. When was your last meal? I don't know. Do you remember what you ate last? No. Last night? No. I literally, you can ask her, I confronted Miracle, I grabbed him by the back of the neck and said everything you stole from that dude, you can do whatever you can to get it back. And then what happened? Huh? And then what happened? Every single holiday since the day you met her, you have made our life a living hell. On her, on my birthday, Mother's Day, you made her cry five times. What kind of bar boyfriend makes... You know she lost her kid, and you make her cry five times on Mother's Day, which just happens to be my birthday. Five times. So come to me as a man and explain that. Still in the game, so you know, What's that? Still in the game. Uh, we got several prices. In the game? I mean, uh, I'm homeless. Medi medicated. I'm homeless because the uh, feds have fired me for my last five jobs. The feds? Well, I don't know. Are you DEA or what? <laughs> no, I don't know anything about I was just small talk there, bud. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just came to talk to the doctor. Yeah. Co coincidentally, just walked in while I'm here. Randomly, just yeah, coincidentally walked in while you're here <laughs> in the building that we used to work at. Yeah, yeah. Curious, why did you promote me over all those other people? Uh, you seem like the right guy for the job. So then you expanded to three dispensaries and then put me up on a burner phone, so they all called me and then I called you on the burner phone. So when we got raided, it all would have looked like I ran the place. No. That's, That's the weird. point of the burner phone, right? Everybody in the industry was using burner phones back in 2010. But not me. You had them call my personal phone, each of the three dispensaries I worked at. Your personal burner phone? No. They called my personal cell phone, and then I called you guys on the burner phone. So all the dispensaries called my personal phone number. Yeah. And it looked like I was running all three, and then I'd call on the burner phone. So if somebody was going to raid those dispensaries, all the phone records would have pointed to me. So I would have gone to jail for 20 years for you guys. Nobody was going to go to jail. I was, because I was the only one who worked there who wasn't a DEA agent. 
Because I was the only one who worked there who wasn't a DEA agent. The stops were still in our name. What's that? But they were our, they were in our name. Uh -huh. But you lived in Mexico. My brother lived here. I lived in Mexico. At the time, you both lived in Mexico. My brother never lived in Mexico. That's not what I thought. Yeah. Obviously, I stepped into something here. I'm gonna yeah. take off. Now. Yeah. Man. Listen, I'll, I'll I'll talk to you later. Yeah, take care of yourself. I got history man. with this guy. Yeah, you sure do. I'm gonna go have lunch right now. Yeah. Call me when you when you got All right. Bye bye now. Good luck, sir. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Just walk over here by the wall. Four of you, huh? She was scared. Look how scared he is. I'll leave. Okay. No, you're not gonna touch your stuff. Oh no, I'm afraid okay. of my no, stuff. No, you're not. You're not gonna touch your bag. Okay. Okay. What are you afraid's in there? The hole. See the bugs? Okay. Okay. What's your What's your business today? Uh, doing a political protest. Okay, well, you can't go inside the federal You can protest all you want out here, uh -huh. but you can't go inside the federal building like that, sir. Yeah. Okay? You can't do that. No, just can't you just have a nice couple of citations. Contaminate. Oh, I got plenty of citations. Can I, I'm slowly taking these out. These are the uh, government being tortured. You have ID on you. I do have ID on me. I got to reach for it in the backpack. Okay. I'm going to do that. I'm covered in butts. I'll tell you what, how about, can I go in the backpack? Sure. All right. Okay, unzip that so part there. Do it up front. The top one. While he's doing that, let me see your ID. Uh, well, that's what he's getting. It's that wallet right there. I got your wallet. You have any weapons in here? I don't. There's you have a any, small any scissors. On you? No. There's a small scissors and a butter knife. Uh, other than that, is just the bugs. On your so tell me something. I love, I love ladybugs. I you love ladybugs? I think they're wonderful. Uh, so, but why, why would you walk around with ladybugs on? I just bought just them. Curious. I just bought them for this. So you just kind of want to... Yep. What could you possibly be protesting with ladybugs? Well, the government bugging Americans for, you know, against the Constitution, that whole Fourth Amendment it. thing that get, got thrown out with the Patriot Act. So that kind of rhymes. I get it. Bug. Bugging. Yeah, it doesn't just rhyme. It's you, a you, metaphor. You pick a, a nice, not so intrusive bug, right? Yes. Got, it's a, it's a beneficial roaches. insect. Thank insect God you didn't have roaches. <laughs> no, no roaches. Okay. So a beneficial bugs. insect. Now listen. This, real quick, is this address valid? I'm homeless. So, so I don't, you have no home right now. So I have so no home. not good. So there is no address that's good, but okay. that's... It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Just let the pain go, Vicky, let the pain go. Let it go. he did last time snap the fuck out of it whatever he said make it stop he said something to you on the phone you've been sick ever since he did this a year ago too dude i got it all on tape so listen uh i do receive mail there yes you're not protesting in there well i i did actually i'm done That's, okay you could go in there to use irs whatever you guys would let me back in the building after all this uh, no. <laughs> I'm just saying, you cannot protest in there, okay? You can exercise I'm sorry, your personal sorry, can right I, I'm sorry, can I push the YouTube? Poor YouTube no, people you have been getting... No, you your phones alone okay. right now. We're live. I'm just saying. Okay, well, that's great. Awesome. But you cannot go into a federal building with bugs all over you, sir. And yet okay? I just did. You have to snap into the, another personality or it won't stop. But you cannot go into a federal building with bugs all over you, sir. And yet okay? I just did. Well, yes, and now you're out here. Okay. You should be. Okay? All right. So I guess that was it, huh? Really thought that's it. not it. Okay, what happens now? I just hold tight. Ah. Uh, okay. Matter of fact, sit back over there. Sure. No, over there, away from the stuff. What's the code? Huh? What's the code? What? To get her to stop feeling sick? The code was baby girl. She let it slip later that when he called her baby girl, she felt all better. You don't know. I don't believe you. I should be so lucky. <laughs> Look it up. 
A narc says what? The fuck is wrong with you? A narc says what? A narc. You're such a fucking cunt. No, you're just doing this for the fun of it. <laughs> you narc piece of shit. Derek Aronson. Okay. Uh, I'm AB Delta. Okay. So, what, um. I just put it on his bag. 10 marks. So, my name is Randy Flynn, the Secretary of the Office of the Department. What can I do with these? I don't know. You can get the FBI to leave him the fuck alone. Why do you think they're responsible for anything to do with you? Well, I don't know. I got. I don't know. 16 years of video proving they've destroyed my fucking life. Okay. Well, so, I got a lot of videos of video proving they've destroyed my fucking life. Okay. So, what can we do about that right now? I just kind of wanted this video. You know? oh. so, where's your idea? It's in the bag. Can you show it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're, we're in the bag. Yeah, I'll we're show you. Fine. Relax. Relax. You gotta, uh, you gotta pull up that whole. What's your name? Seth Arrington. Seth Arrington. Seth Arrington. Seth Arrington. Seth Arrington. Also, can I reach in here real quick? I'm also running for president under my great grandfather's name. No arrests, they just wrote me a ticket and uh, say, say goodbye to the DHS officers. Gentlemen, thank you for, I guess, not arresting me. And I still don't get a redress of my grievances, oh well.